So hi everyone, good afternoon. So first of all, welcome to our manual management webinar and thanks for taking your time to join us today. And we hope that you find these sessions today helpful for your business. So before we begin, a few things to note. If you have questions during the session, please leave them in the chat box. Right? We will be sending out a short survey at the end of the sessions as well. Please fill in after these sessions to help us understand and uh, to improve and do better. And if you find today's sessions helpful and would like to explore other topics, head over to our Food Panda University, which you can find in your restaurant portal. There, you will find a step-by-step -step guide and videos to take you through all you need to know. So, we've brought everyone together today to share some of the tips on how you can effectively optimize and create an attractive menu to boost your order volume by utilizing the tools and features available on your restaurant portal. So in today's sessions, we'll be covering some of the common issues that our partners face, especially in keeping uh, an updated and attractive menu. So we help you to understand why menu updates rejections occur and how you can prevent them by understanding the guidelines. We'll then share some tips and show you how you can create an attractive menu. So stay tuned for the live demo, which we will present very shortly, as we will show you how to edit your menu in real time on the restaurant portal. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so have you felt this way? So have you ever felt lost and unsure of how to use the complicated tools and processes to edit your menu? Or have you ever felt uh, frustrated and unable to understand why your requested menu updates were rejected multiple times. And also, have you ever felt like you're interested to learn how to create a beautiful and accurate menu to attract and retain customers and also, of course, to boost small orders in our platform? So, that's why we are here to help you, all right? We will give you like a quick tips and solutions on how you can improve your menu. So of course, we will show you how you can keep your menu as updated as possible by using our manual management tool in the restaurant bottle, right? And secondly, we will take you through assisting menu guidelines for you to better understand them and update your menu with ease. And lastly, of course, we will share some simple tips and tricks on how you can maintain and update an attractive menu to stand out from other restaurants, right? By uploading attractive photos and allow customizations in your menu to help you boost order volume. So, why should you bother with managing your own menu? So, of course, first of all, an accurate and information menu helps reduce customer disappointment. So, based on our past results and past studies on our platform, 92% of rejected customers do not reorder. All right, if let's just say, um, your menu is not informative or attractive enough for the customers to place the order on your platform, right? And secondly, having an attractive menu makes you more visually appealing to customers compared to restaurants with no menu 
pictures or descriptions right so this will actually help you to boost your order sales of course uh, rest assured that our menu management tool is straightforward and easy to use so over here like in this slide it stated a few pointers here first of all it only requires a few clicks for small changes so you have the facility to do the changes yourself anytime anywhere all right and secondly it has fast turnover time which means all requests are processed within one to two working days all right and third you can easily track the status of your request on the restaurant portal itself and find out if your request has been approved reject or pending so of course before we move on to the live demo let us understand a few terms right which is important for you to know when you navigate in the restaurant photo so what's the difference between listing photo and banner photo so listing photo is the first photo of your customer see when they open their food panda app banner photo refers to the photo that the customer see when they click inside the restaurant pop, uh, restaurant page all right banner photo is usually displayed at the top as a banner image right so hence we strongly encourage you to display your most uh, recommended or your best selling dishes or your signature dish as your banner photos to immediately capture customers' attention. You can put a uh, listing photo and for banner photos the same pictures uh, if you want to attract the customers. Of course, I will show you some of the example right? uh, or how it appear on our Food Panda website page very shortly so okay next menu contains all the categories items show to the customer and category refers to the group of items for example rice noodles beverages desserts right category descriptions refer to something the group of items have in common for example, if all the rice set meals you sell comes with a complimentary soup or vegetables or drinks, right? You can input this in your category descriptions. Like for example, all rice sets comes with a drink. Okay, so now we move on to the next terms that customer will see. For example, item name. So item name is the name of the product, okay? And item descriptions gives customer a better expectation of the dish or what they can expect. You can even include ingredients list or calorie count drop down to appeal to the health conscious customers, right? And also for dish photo, it gives customers a visual expectations of how the dish will look like okay this will allow customer to envision how the food will look like when they place the order okay item variations represent different options available for an item for instance different price for a different price okay now next is choice groups okay so choice groups are classifications of options for customers to modify items sometimes at a cost okay choices are options that customers can choose from to customize or modify their dishes or items okay and minimum or maximum number of choices let customers know the number of choices that they can select Okay, so here we have reached the live demo and in live demo, 
I will demonstrate how to add or edit the menu, category, items, photos, version, price, choice groups, and how you can actually track your request status. And of course, I will introduce uh, a few of the new features we in includes with um, copy menu and as well as email notifications for all your menu updates. Okay, so without further ado, let us proceed with the live demo. Okay, so over here, let me go to um, Restaurant portal first. All right. So the first thing first, uh, you would need to have your own login credentials into the Restaurant portal. All right. So if you would like to request for a new login credential, let's just say you have forgotten the password to log into your Restaurant portal, you can always reach out to us in the help center, or you can click forgot password uh, in the portal itself during the login page. Otherwise, you can also check um, your email. All right. So we will usually send a login credentials to your email address and make sure you find that email with the title Welcome to Restaurant Portal or you can search for Restaurant Portal and then over there you can actually open the email and copy paste the password in the email itself and log in to the restaurant portal. Okay. So once you're in the restaurant portal, go to menu management um, plugins over here, the page. You click in and yes, and do make sure that um, the accounts or the outlets that you want to change is the right outlet by changing at the top of the selections over here. Okay, so first thing first, I will teach you how to create a new menu. Oh, no, no, before that, uh, before we go to creating a new menu, I will go in step by step by creating photos, listing photos and banner photos first. Okay. So to give you an overview on how your photos will look like in um, Food Panda website, okay? When customers log into the Food Panda website, right, the first thing they will see these are called listing photos. All right. And if they click into one of the restaurants over here, then these pictures is called banner photo. All right. So now to upload a new listing photo or banner photos or to change the listing photo or banner photo, simply just click into this and then make sure that your minimum dimensions is according to the size stated here and it should be more than 200 kb size all right and do remember that all your photo must be in landscape format all right so to upload the photos over here okay uh just go to your folder all right and select the pictures that you want to upload. So for instance, I select one of my photos over here. Okay. And over here, I can actually adjust the size. Okay. Do make sure that your photos fit into the box over here. Okay. And you can actually zoom in and zoom out. So let's just say I want to zoom out a little bit and okay, I just adjust and click save. Okay, and it should appear as a new picture over here under pending status. All right, so same goes for the banner photos. It's the same way on how you actually upload a new and change the new banner photos. Okay, so all your listing fan photos and banner photos requests will fall under pending if you have changed any. So now move forward to creating a new menu. Okay, so creating a new menu over here, simply just add new and just click on add new menu. All right. 
So over here, you can actually create a new menu out for your restaurant. So for instance, um, I can put like set dinner menu. So basically this whole menu is just for dinner. Okay. And then the menu title over here is, uh, if there's Chinese translation, you can put in the Chinese translation here. Menu descriptions is basically um, uh, for your reference, for your partner's uh, restaurant owner reference, meaning to say like, uh, it's just for you to know whether this menu is for what purpose, for instance. Okay, so if there's no descriptions, you can actually leave it blank. And this is for Chinese translations, if any. Now, when it comes to menu availability, you have to be careful, right? So this menu availability allows you to set the date and time when this menu available for customer to place order in the restaurant, uh, sorry, in the Food Panda website. Okay. So for instance, uh, I create this set dinner menu. It's only for Saturday and Sunday. So I just take this two day. And then the time I will set it to, let's say I will start selling at 5 p.m. Until my kitchen close, right? So which is 8.30 for instance, or let's just say I can change it to 9 p.m. All right. So the thing is, when you set the time over here, please do be careful, right? So let's just say I set it everything here to, I set it every day for this set menu. And then let's just say I set it the time to start at 4 30 p.m., right? There will be an error message pop up here. What it means that because in our websites over here, right? We can only display one menu at a time, meaning to say customers can only order from one menu itself only. Right? So you can see over here, you can also refer back to your menus, your main menu. Right? So make sure that both of these menu does not clash with the time together. Okay, so in order to avoid, you can actually say to 445 or 5 p.m. All right. Then you just click save. So once it's save, right, your second menu will appear here, which is the set dinner. All right. <coughs> now, the next thing is, once you have created the menu, right? Now you want to create a category. So like I mentioned, a new category is like a group of items, for instance, like a main dish, dessert, beverage, uh, appetizers, for instance. All right, so now let's just say I have a new item right now that I want to sell it to customer, right? So uh, I would say I would want to sell nasi lemak. All right, so my nasi lemak, I will categorize them as fries first at the moment. Okay, and this will be uh, the Chinese translation, if there's any. Category type, I can set it to big main, right, because it's a main dish. Okay, category description, it's where you can actually find it under here. So this is called category title. Right, and this is called category description. So you can actually, like I mentioned uh, earlier. So for instance, let's just say all my rice sets comes with soup. I can actually put it here. So my category names, I just put nice sets. And then my category descriptions, I would say all rice sets come with soup. For free. All right, and then uh, this category description is for Chinese translations if there's any. Okay, so once I'm happy with it, I click save. 
and then your category over here would appear immediately as well. Now, like I mentioned just now, I want to add in my last lemma item. Same thing, I create a new one. I add items now. So first thing here, the system will prompt me to add a dish photo first. So dish photo, it means your item photo, which is the last lemma photo. So do make sure that you follow the size that is stated over here. And it must be in JPEG format. And make sure that your photo is in landscape mode. All right? It's not a portrait mode, but it's landscape mode. So upload the dish photo over here from your folder. So I'm going to find my last lemma um, picture. And then I just okay, upload here. So make sure that your items fit into the box over here, okay? And you can also simply zoom in and zoom out as you wish. And these are the photo guidelines that you will need to follow. So make sure your item stays at the center. It does not contain any logo, descriptions, or promotions, etc. And it cannot be too zoomed in, right? Otherwise, it is not clear. For pictures uh, for customers to see okay once you're happy with the whole placement of the photo simply click save okay and you will appear here okay now i can name my item as nasi lama right and this is your chinese translations if there's any item descriptions it means for example this is called item name and this is called item descriptions and just now that I upload the photo, it will appear something like this as well. This is called dish photo. Okay. So now item descriptions, you, like I mentioned earlier, you can put the ingredients or you can put like a unique, um, unique selling point of this dish. What is so special about this dish, right? Because this is actually a good tip for you to help you to boost your sales, right? And increase your order volume. So for example, for my nasi lama, I can just put in like coconut rice with um, homemade sambal, ikan bilis, egg, and cucumbers. Okay, I can just put the ingredients over here. And this is your Chinese translation for the item descriptions. And the category, this is where I would put it under the rice set we I just created earlier. Okay, so then now next thing is this is where you can actually set the price and your variation. So like I mentioned earlier, this is where the part where you can actually set different price for different size. So if you have one item, you can just put it five ringgit over here. Right, but if let's just say if you have different size for the item itself, for instance, I add a variation, put big Chinese translation here, and then I change the price to eight dollar. Yeah, sorry, eight ringgit. Okay, and this is the small portion which I put it as five ringgit. So this is how you can actually send it for different price and different size, right? So the same thing you can also set for soup and dry as well. Okay, and then over here at the bottom, this is where the choice groups appear. Choice groups, which means is the add-ons. Like for example, let's just say I click on one of the item here. This add-ons over here will be called choice group, which allow customers to pick uh, whether they want to add on items or they want to customize their item. Okay, so if let's just say this last little amount, you allow your customer to pick an add-on, simply just click on one of the the choice group over here, right? For big and for small, all right? If let's just say you doesn't want to have any add-ons for this particular item, you just simply untick them, all right? So once you are safe, click, make sure to click save. Okay, so over here, this part is very, very, very important. All right, please do not confuse with dine, uh, dining menu, photos together with your dish photo. All right, 
a lot of our partners always confuse at this part. So Daiye Menu photo is basically your whole Daiye Menu that you offer the same thing as your restaurant's Daiye Menu. All right. And these photos is simply just your items photo. All right. So let's just say if you have a new Daiye Menu just for delivery, you can just click upload a new Daiye Menu. Right. And if let's just say you previously have uploaded before, you can just click on it and just click on one of the menu that you upload before. All right. So let's just say now I want to upload a new dining menu. I click on the second options. All right. Make sure to follow the guidelines for the dining menu as well. Upload. Okay. So now I would go to my folder and upload a new dining menu. Okay. So once you upload it, successfully upload, it will take one to two days for approval. Okay. And all the changes will immediately appear under pending as well. Okay. Here's like another catch. When you upload a dining menu, make sure um, all the item name, item descriptions, your price, your picture must be same as what you upload in the portal and also uh, what is shown on the dining menu. Everything must be same. Okay. Please do remember my words. Okay, so the next thing is, let's just say you want to edit your menu. The timing over here, simply click on edit menu and you can change your time. All right. So once you have clicked or change your time, you just click save and you will update it automatically. Same things, if let's just say you want to change or edit your category name, right? Or either you want to sort your category um, positions, right? You can just put it at the top over here and I just click save. So my right set, the promotion category will appear at the top. Okay. So now if let's just say I want to change the price of the item or I want to change the photo, the dish photo, right? I simply just click on one of the items over here right and over here i can actually change away my dish photo and i upload a new one okay same thing i click save all right and then i can also change my name my item name and also this is how i actually change my price as well so i just say i increase to 50 cent when I click save, same thing, it will still prompt me to upload my new dining in menu. So make sure your dining menu, the price must be same as what you update on the restaurant portal. The picture must be same as what you update on the restaurant portal. Same goes for your item name and item descriptions. So let's just say I upload my previous menu in, I click submit. And same thing, it will take one to two days for approval. Okay. And if let's just say you want to delete one of the items, you are no longer selling that item, right? Let's just say you want to delete one of the items permanently, then you simply scroll to the bottom over here and click delete the item, right? But if let's just say your items temporarily unavailable, Please do not do anything in this restaurant bottle. You have to go to your go drive and set the items as unavailable. All right, remember, go to your go drive and set it as unavailable. Okay. Now, next thing is to add a choice group. So the, again, I repeat, the choice group is actually your add-ons or your customizations. So basically, to add a choice group over here, I can just click on, like, for example, this restaurant, he put a very fancy uh, choice group name, fancy add-ons, right? So I can just put like uh, add-ons for sex. Okay. And then for, this is for the Chinese translation. Now, 
if I go to the choices here, right, this is where I can create my my add-ons options. So for example, I allow customer to add on rice and then with uh, probably extra price. So each time they add on a rice, it will increase, it will charge that as additional one ringgit. Again, ayam rendang. I will charge my customer extra five ringgit. Mm, I am goreng. Again, I will also let's just say I will charge my customer additional five ringgit for this add on. Okay, so now over here, the minimum number of choices and maximum number of choices. This is how you can actually allow customer whether to uh, optional for them to choose an add on or is it a compulsory for them to pick an add on? So if I choose zero, it means it's optional for customers to add on. And then my maximum number of add ons they can add is three items based on this item count over here. So um, if let's just say I put it at so one, it means that the customer compulsory to pick at least one choices or one add-ons from this count over here, right? And the maximum number of choices that they can add is three. So I hope it's clear for everyone. So let's just say I just set it as optional for customer to add on. It's up to them whether they want to add on the item or not. So I just click save. Same thing, you need to upload your dine-in menu. All right, so remember your dining menu. Your dining menu is consists of the whole item name, item description, price, photos, everything. All right, so it must be the same as what you offer to your customer in your dining uh, restaurants. So first, I can just uh, either upload a new one or I pick the dining menu that I previously uploaded just now. So I submit. And again, my request will take one to two days for approval. Okay, so once it has approved, it will appear here. And over here, once it has approved, you can actually set the add-ons and set it under add-on choice groups over here by clicking it. All right. Okay, so my choice group is under progress right now. So Again, let's just say I want to sort my choice groups. I can actually sort up and down, all right? It's up to me. And if let's just say I want to delete the add-on, I no longer offer such add-ons. I can just scroll to the bottom here and click delete, right? It should make the changes immediately over here. And if you doesn't see the changes uh, appearing here after deleting the choice group, simply refresh the whole page again and it will appear automatically. I mean, uh, it will disappear automatically. Okay, so all your pending requests will fall under the pending status of my year. Okay, and uh, example like what I have changed just now, it will appear here and those rejected will appear under the rejected status and you can actually click in to see uh, what our content team actually uh, rejected to you before this. So for instance, uh, let's just say I click on one of the items. So yeah, it will show you the, the rejections reasons over here. So make sure you follow and make the changes accordingly. Okay. Then when it approves the status, it will appear under approved status over here. Okay. So another thing that, uh, as I mentioned, our, our new features that appear on the restaurant portal here under the menu management setup page. Right, so basically this is called one of the new 
uh, feature that we have, which is called copy menu. Right. So copy menu, how does it work? If let's just say you are chain outlet, right? You make a changes on one of the main menu and you want to apply this main menu, the same thing to other outlets as well. Simply click on the copy to outlets and select the outlet that you want to copy the menu to. All right. So just click this and then you just submit. And then it will automatically sync your main menu to the menu of the other outlets. Okay. So make sure that um, all your all your pending status has been approved, right? So that um, the menu copy here, it will work successfully, right? Otherwise, it will appear here if there's still pending requests or there are some of the things that were not approved. Okay, and another thing, new features is called email notification. Make sure you're on this email notification by clicking this button over here, and then you will able to receive all the updates, right, that you recently made on the menu management portal here. And you would, yeah, you will definitely receive the email from uh, the food vendor. Okay, so if let's just say if you are chain outlets, you want you also want to know like what the other outlets has made changes to their menu, you can just simply on this as well, and it will also shows you um the updates from the other outlets as well. Okay, so that's all for the live demo. Now we will back to the slide. So over here, let's now go through the most common manual request rejections reasons and um, to understand our manual guidelines better. Okay, so first of all, this is one of the manual guidelines that you will need to follow. So make sure you all the information that you provided matches with what was requested on the restaurant portal. Okay. So for instance, you can see the example over here. The price of the Thai milk tea is $6.99 on the restaurant bottle, right? However, when you upload the menu on the bottle itself, it's showing $4.99. So hence, please make sure that all the changes you made on the restaurant bottle earlier matches with your dining menu picture, all right? Same price, same name, same photo, same item descriptions. Everything should be the same as what you update on the restaurant bottle. Okay, so next is make sure that the information you entered is at the correct field. So always double check and make sure you have entered the right information at the right uh, box, right? To prevent your read request from being rejected by our content team. And next, moving on to the price updates. Okay, so dining menu photo must contain the same information on the items that you are updating on the restaurant bottle, right? And then also make sure you upload the dining menu photo when prompted by the systems and make sure that it is not your dish photo. Again, I repeat, this is called your dining menu photo and this is dish photo, okay? So now moving forward, it is our photo guidelines. So first of all, make sure you display the picture, your item picture of the whole dish. All right, in this way, the customer can see the dish clearly without needing to zoom in. Next, your photo must be at the center of the box. All right. 
Having different photos with a different position will make your menu look messy. Right. This will lessen customers' viewing experience and increase the dropout rate of the customers. Hence, in order to boost your sales or your order volume, make sure you standardize all your photos to be at the center. Okay, next thing is make sure your product is in the focus. It looks sharp and clear and not like the picture on the right. So ensure that all your photo does not contain. Uh, okay, sorry. The next thing is to ensure that your photo does not contain any additional items that are not included in the delivery, and yeah, not be delivered to the customers. So for instance, make sure that let's just say you are selling a smoothie bowl, just view uh, just upload the pictures with only the smoothie bowls with the ingredients that you have and not like the pictures on the right where it has shows a lot of items, but you are not delivering that. Okay, so having such inaccurate photo will confuse your customers and it hence you build out a false expectations and it results to a uh, bad customer experience. So you do not want that to happen to your restaurants as well and to receive complaints for uh, the restaurants. Okay, and the next thing is the photo should not contain watermark, logo, price, border, contact details, external links. Like for the one on the right, we do not accept pictures on the right. So make sure your pictures, uh, it must be clear like uh, what is shown on the left. And next is your listing and banner photo should not be collage. So collage, it means by this, a group of pictures, a group of multiple pictures together in one. Right? So make sure that you upload your listing and banner photo as one picture right and showcase your best dish or your signature dish to help you increase or to boost your sales and lastly make sure that your photo should not be taken from other sources like for example google image or from another manual photo Right. We do not accept such photo and make sure it's coming from your own camera or your own camera. Okay. Of course, please avoid taking photos directly from your menu. And it's hard to differentiate which menu is from which restaurant. So yeah, make sure that your photos comes originally from your website. You can actually take your photos from your Instagram account or your Facebook page. Right. Now let's move forward to the next slide is how to boost um, your restaurant's revenue with these menu elements. So I'm going to give you a few tips on how you can actually improve your menu to help you boost sales or the order volume. So tip number one is, of course, bundle your products by creating combo set meals. Right. As you can see, a lot of our chain outlets like restaurants, galaxy, they always like to do combo use because it attracts customers, right? So use the main dish items from other categories such as drinks, sides, or desserts. And you can also choose to combine your most popular items with the new products together. Okay, so... Have fun in experimenting in uh, different ways to combine your products so that you can actually help to boost uh, your order volume and to make an attractive bundle that appeal to customer. Okay, so customer will be more inclined to purchase these bundle products as they perceive them to be value for money. Okay, and this helps to increase your average order value, which in turn, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it will boost your restaurant's revenue. And tip number two, okay, upsell through add-ons. 
like how I show you how to create an add-ons by using choice groups, right? Consider providing the add-ons to an item to encourage customer to order more. Okay, customers see this as a form of customizations and they have the flexibility to decide whether to add on additional items to their dish or not. And next is allow customizations. Similar to tip number two, it gives the customers the freedom to customize their own dish. So by allowing them to replace the ingredients, some at an additional cost. Okay. So this has uh, increased the flexibility the customer have to modify the item to suit their dietary restrictions and personal preference will improve the experience with you. This will definitely help to increase the number of returning customers and broaden your customer pool. And next step is creating an attractive descriptions on the menu. So if you do not know what to write on your item descriptions or how to start, simply follow some of the ideas listed here to get started. So like for example, you can showcase your cooking method, whether it's steamed, grilled, baked. Uh, you can also list out the ingredients that you have when you prepare this dish. Okay, so for if let's just say you offer a combo meals, make sure that you include uh, your item. Uh, what are the items in the combo meals? For example, drink or rice and the vegetables. Right? And next thing is highlight seasonal items. Offer seasonal menus to customer for a limited time period. This can be planned in conjunction with festive seasons such as Chinese New Year, Christmas, Valentine's Day, or Hari Raya, or even Father's Day, right? So simply, how you can actually create these uh, seasonal items is simply just create a new category out, right? And then you can actually label it as uh, Hari Raya Promotion or Valentine's Day combo meals, right? Then rearrange the order of how your category appear and we always recommend vendors to rearrange the category to the top so that customer can immediately see uh, it's a special category for a limited time, then they will actually place the order immediately from your restaurant. Okay, the next tip is simply upload the dish photo. So, did you know that adding a dish photo can help you boost the conversion to 4.5 times compared to those restaurants that does not have any photos at all in the menu? So, it is very important to have a delicious and eye-pleasing photos. Why so? Is because it definitely make customer eager to order the food from your restaurant, okay? And also, if you need help in taking a perfect dish photo, Food Panda offers professional photography as well uh, to bring your food to life, okay? So these are some of the benefits that our partners can experience when using our photography services. So uh, it helps them to boost their branding, increase the restaurant visits, and as well as increase the order volume. Right? It has been proven that the menu with photos perform better than those menu without or any photos. So for more information on the photography service, just now you can actually go to the UDC page in the restaurant portal and then look for photo tips and guidelines and in there you can actually find the link to request for a photography service. Right. So now let's move on to our quick tips time quiz. Okay, so this quiz is basically uh, to test your understanding so far and take on the lens of 
our team and see if you will reject or approve the following photos. So the first photo that we have over here is whether do you approve or reject these dish photos for New York cheesecake slice. So I'm going to launch the pool here very shortly. And from the pool, just select uh, whether you approve or reject. Okay, so I will launch the pool. Do let me know whether you approve this photo or reject this photo. Okay, I see a lot of people actually approve this photo. And some uh, also say they reject this photo. Okay, I will stop the pool in three, two, one. Okay. So as you can see, um, a lot of a lot of uh, our partners here actually approve this dish photo. However, the correct answer is reject. So for those of you who actually answer uh, reject, right? Congratulations, you're at the right track. So why this photo is rejected, right? It's because uh, the descriptions over here it mentions slice. So as you can see in this photo here, it shows a whole cake instead of a slice. So hence our content team will reject this photo as it does not accurately represent the right quantity. So make sure when you submit a dish photo, you also submit the right represents uh, of the right quantity. Okay. Now let's move forward to the second quiz. Okay, so over here, I have another dish photo, which is called chicken sandwich. And the descriptions over here, it call, comes with a side vegetables and mayo. So do let me know whether you approve or reject in the pool. Okay, and I launch. Okay. All right, fantastic. I see a lot of you actually answer the correct answer. Okay, I will stop the pool in three, two, one. Okay, so yes. So basically the correct answer is approved. Okay, so this photo accurately represents the descriptions in both quantity and quality. So hence, our content team will definitely approve this dish photo. So next is we have already come to an end of our sessions over here. And thank you for your participation. We hope that these tips are beneficial to you. And I am sure that you will be implementing some of them in your business as well. So I have provided a few uh, quick resources over here the ensure that you stay updated on all the things about food panda related okay so if you let just say you want to access on the restaurant portal page you can actually uh, scan the qr code here and also i'll click into the link over here and our university guides provide all the tutorials on step-by-step -step tutorials and also a video guidelines as well as you can also check out our YouTube channel page where we also show all of our video guides. And next is you can also join our Facebook group so that you do not miss any of our latest updates. So this Facebook group is our official Food Panda Partners page. So usually we will update all our latest requests, latest updates, latest news about Food Panda uh, related to our partners. 
And also you can see the tips and tricks that share by our vendors and myself. So do join our Facebook group and not to miss out any updates. So in case uh, if you have any questions for us regarding on your menu, do submit them in the chat room and we'll be consolidate these questions and answer them through a recap email shortly. So do make sure to keep a lookout for it. So that's all for today. So uh, please take some time to fill up your feedback survey that you'll be receiving shortly after these sessions. And we hope to see you in the next class. Thank you so much for joining.